All right, let's uh, let's jump right in. We have stuff to do. So, so now we're we're continuing to build the chain. And if you think about mixing foundations, it's it's saturation, it's reductive EQ, it's compression, which was last week, and now it's additive stuff. Right? We take the sound, we we make it richer and denser with saturation. We carve away at it initially of what we think we need after we sort of make it richer and expand it. Um, and then we contain it with dynamics to apply pressure and power. And now we're going to start to, now we have this thing um, that's starting to shape up. And now we're going to start to do some additive things and some some pushing things, you know, certain parts of the frequency spectrum, just like a mixing foundation, same idea. So let's go here. All right, so now let's go to musical EQ, just like mixing foundations. So there are lots of different choices for musical EQ. And we know what musical EQ does. Uh, they give us musical choices. They make us make decisions. And they have saturation. And they have nonlinear um, sort of uh, responses. And also, they kind of, by design, dictate a certain workflow that makes you land in musical places. So it's the opposite of a technical tool like a Pro Q3. <clears throat> um, this has got some fixed stuff and it's weird. So this is a Pultec. This is famous. This is super old. And you can still get the hardware and they can make you a mastering version. And the way that this works is you can boost or attenuate, which is cut, these fixed low frequencies here. And you can even do both and create a Pultec curve, which is like a bump with a dip before the bump and actually is very musical. And then you can boost th these frequencies. And this is your cue or your width for, for, the, for this boost. And then you can, this attenuation is for these frequencies. And it's sort of like a somewhere between a filter and a shelf for, for darkening. And then here's your uh, gain output. So this is quirky. And if you fell out of bed and tried to use this, you'd have to get to know the design because it's a little funny. But once you know, you know. And so what this means is it makes me make choices. So I say, do I like 5K, 8K, 10K, 12K today? And I can't get in between. And that's good. Because it makes me make choices. Now, for UAD people, the, one of the coolest things to know, and I didn't know this until recently, is if you hover above a parameter or a dial and you use your up and down buttons, you can go very quickly. And then if I hover over here and use my up and down buttons, I can also move in increments. And that's actually really nice up and down buttons and side to side buttons work the same. Um, I know. I didn't know that until Paul Fox, one of our founding fathers showed it to me. And I was like, you're kidding me. And it's especially good on little consoles. Really good. So, so when we're doing musical EQ, we don't know what we're doing. We don't know what we're looking for. We're just looking to have fun. You can very blindly dial around and see what you like. And it's, it's fun. It's like this.
see how easy and simple this is to drive and how powerful it is and how it's really kind of wonderful not to have a million choices and a million lights flickering at you and just this very simple interface and using your ears and the clickiness of going between the frequencies. Um, it's quick. The top mastering people in the world who we've been competing against on Mondays and Wednesdays, and we'll do it again in January. We have this one month format. It's really been super fun. Um, and uh, so anyway, uh, you'll all be invited because you'll be graduates of mastering. Uh, the bandwidth is the Q, exactly, the width. All the way to the, is this is sharp, it's probably hard to read. This is sharp and this is broad. So this is narrow and this is wide. And look at the big difference when you go in and out of bypass here. So this this is a one example of musical EQ, and we could also boost some low end, but we kind of got some low end going already. Um, but oh, what the heck? Let's just see what happens. Super, super simple, quick, easy, wonderful, wonderful in its simplicity. All right, let's go to another school favorite. And that's this thing. This is a scary looking, um, this is a scary looking EQ to the uninitiated. What this is, is gain on top, even though it says bandwidth. Bandwidth is in the middle and then fixed frequencies here on the bottom. And each one of these bands is one of the unique things about it is that it is parallel, not serial. So the sound isn't going out of this EQ and then into this EQ with its affected sound and then out of that EQ into this EQ. It's being split up equally into all these modules and then summed at the end. Very fancy. And this is also real. This is tubes and transformers. Each one of these bands can either boost with this little um, little switch or cut, and each one can be a shelf or a bell. And it also has this unique thing where you could have cascading shelves that would end up looking like walking upstairs or something. You could have four shelves going. Have I ever done that? No, but you could. Um, so, you know, this is, and then these are fixed frequencies that I can again change with the up and down arrows much very quickly. Um, same with the gain, hover above the gain, and then I can up and down arrow or side to side, it works the same. And so counterclockwise here is narrow on the Q and that's wide. And then there are uh, filters in the middle here. And these are high cuts and the frequencies are crazy, like 47K these kind of things, but they actually do color the sound even in the digital realm and you can play with them. So there's high cuts and low cuts here and there's gain. So at first it's weird because like, you know, 10 K is over here, but then there's no 10 K here, but then there's 500 here, but there's 470 there. Sometimes you feel like you're kind of like on a hunt for the frequency you want. And that is weird, but once you get used to this, you can do pretty much anything you want. And it has a really cool sound. Same concept as a pull tech, different design, but the same kind of clicky, detented um, EQ choices. And also the kind of workflow where, you know, again, you get saturation, you get musical choices, musical workflow, 
not a lot of flashing meters and lights and stuff and a really good sound. So let's, let's try this one. Just freely see what sounds good. So what is the workflow when you're doing musical EQ? You exaggerate the boost, right? You exaggerate the boost so you can hear what you're doing. You sweep around to find the frequencies that happen to grab you and sound good. And then you back down the gain and you adjust the cue. I'll say that again. You exaggerate the boost. You go shopping for frequencies. You find something you like. You back, you, you back off the exaggeration and then you adjust the cue and it works really, really good. Um, does the massive passive saturate more by driving it? It does, but not like a Veramu, right? So if we go to the Veramu and we want to saturate it, we drive this input and that's like a saturation knob. There is no drive on this EQ. This, this gain is clean output, not saturated output. And there's no input drive. You could try driving it. I don't, I think if you wanted more to be more manly, clean, bright tube saturation, I would use a Veramu. I think, I think so. I think you get, have, you get more joy out of that. Okay. Listen, everyone have a wonderful, cool rest of your day. And, uh, and I'll see everyone on Thursday and we will complete the mastering chain. Yay. Okay. Amazing. All right. Great to see everyone. Thank you for coming to class. I'll see you on Thursday. Cheers. Cheers.